chapter number seven, great ten, one of the important chapter, one of the very difficult chapter that people think that is what a very easiest chapter, but right. So this is a chapter. The term. Lots of people are confusing about this one. This uh, uh, this uh, this unit. But don't confuse if you understood, if you come to every class, remember what, before I want to start this one. If you miss one class for this unit, if you miss one class for this unit, you can't understand again, you can understand again, right? So don't miss the class, that's why I have postponed two or three days to confirm others. But even if you miss one class here, you can study other other chapters, other, other subject. But if you miss this class, one class, it's tough to remember. So it's tough to understand. Because this is very, very much, it's like a, it's, a, it, it, this, a, this chapter is what, one of the toughest subject chapter that people think is in chemistry, but actually that is not, right? So I can't, I, I'm not going to talk too much about this one, right? So let's talk about first one. We already discussed about chapter number one. The chapter number one is, grade 10 chapter number one is a biology. Second, that is physics. Third one you might have been studying, that is chemistry. Four and five, that is again physics. Six, biology. Now you came to seven, that is chemistry, right? So we have studied this chapter number six, biology already. Now we have came to these, uh, with the quantifications of elements and compounds, unit number seven, grade 10. Before we want to start this one, I have to say one thing. If you have any trouble in this chapter after the class, you can ask anytime, anything, right? So remember that, no problem. It's, it's tough, bit tough. If you don't miss the class, if you're not missing the class, then no problem. But if you miss the class, at least one class, you can't really tough to understand. And I'm not talk, going to talk about again that about missing class, right? Okay. Now look, the quantifications of elements. The first point you look at this one, the mass can be measured in a different unit. You know that in our elements, in our day-to-day -day life, any any object, something like any object can be measured. The mass is, I already said, it's a type of scalar quantity. That mass can be measured in a different unit. For example, if you look kilogram, we know that the unit of this kilogram is capital G. Is it? No, wrong. That's not capital G. It should be simple G, right? Kilogram and gram. These are the units, milligram, microgram, nanogram. These are the units of this mass. In this chapter, what we are going to discuss about mainly, mainly, mainly four or five topics five or four topics. Number one is a relative molecular mass, relative atomic mass. Number one, number two is atomic mass unit. Number three, relative molecular mass. Number four, number four a gather of constant. Number five is a mole. In that five chapter, five topic, we will discuss about this, uh, we'll discuss about those topic. See, here you can see I have given a different units of mass. 
But in this chapter, we will talk about the look at this one, the smallest unit of this mass of any object, any matter, the smallest unit of any matter is atogram. Look, what is that? We didn't see again, we didn't hear about this one earlier. The smallest unit of mass is atogram. This it is, has been found. We already discussed this one is the unit of mass is kilogram, gram, milligram, microgram. So it should be microgram, sorry. Microgram and also nanogram. But here, the smallest unit of this mass is atogram. We are going to talk about the mass of, look, mass of atoms. Mass of atoms. That mass no. of atom, remember one thing. Remember one thing. Just let's go to this blackboard, right? Here, if you see, We already, we, you, must, you must know this one. You might have been studying the different types of elements. Can you tell me the elements, right? For example, uh, what's it? Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, beryllium, wait, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, Fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium, scandium, titanium, vanadium. But in your syllabus, only 20 elements. In these elements, elements are made up by what? For example, I'm taking a carbon. I'm just taking a carbon. If you take a carbon, for example, if it's a carbon element, this carbon element made by what? Made up by what? Carbon atoms. Every element made up by carbon elements made up by atoms. For example, fluorine elements made by fluorine atoms, sodium element made up by, made up by sodium atoms. Every element made up by sodium, uh, sorry, atoms. I am taking this carbon atom. This carbon element, the number of carbon atoms, atoms made made carbon elements. This is called carbon. And the smallest part of this one is what? Carbon atom. For example, I am talking. We already discussed the mass of, right? The mass of this carbon atoms could be, I already said, the smallest unit the smallest unit of mass is, what is that? Of mass is, what is that? Atogram. 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 That atogram, that atogram, remember, this is, this is a very important part. This atogram is, is very smallest unit of mass. One gram is equal 10 to the power minus 18. Sorry, one atogram is equal. Wait, huh? One atogram is equal. One atogram is equal 10 to the power minus 8 gram. Look. Look, I can see, wait.
So one atogram is equal 10 to the power minus 18 gram means this carbon atom's mass is very smaller than the smallest unit of mass. Remember that. That's an interesting thing. What is the interesting thing? What is that interesting thing? The smallest unit of the smallest unit of mass is 10 to the power minus 18 gram is equal 1 atogram. This atogram is very smallest unit of any atoms, oh sorry, any object mass. But atoms mass is very smaller than this unit. Let's talk about that again. Look at this one. If you come to this here, the smallest unit, the smallest unit of mass is, it's tough to, what's that? It's tough to teach, right? It should actually, it's tough to teach even in online stuff, right? But let's do, right? The smallest unit of mass is atogram. One atogram is equal 10 to the power minus 18 gram. So this is 10 to the power minus 18 gram. Look next point. Even this small unit of mass is too large to indicate the mass of atoms. Which means mass of atoms. Mass of atoms, mass of atoms, very smaller than this, what is that? This atogram, this mass of atoms, one atom or atoms, very smaller than atogram. Let's see some of the important metals, sorry, uh, elements, some of the important elements uh, uh, atoms mass has been found by scientists. Look at this one. For example, look, the mass of a carbon atom. I already said you must know the difference between elements and carbon. If it's an element, the number of carbon, number of carbon, for example, number of every, this is the, this every, these are the carbon atoms. The number of carbon atoms forms carbon elements. We are talking about one, one atom, one atom. Look, one atom. Look, one atom. This one atom mass is how much? How much? 1.993 into, look at this one, 10 to the power minus 23 gram. 10 to the power minus 23. Which means, can you tell me the value of 10 to the power minus 1? 0 0.1 10 to the power minus 2 0 0.01 10 to the power minus 10 0 0.00000001 look how much very small the mass of one carbon atom it is very smaller than atogram. Look at this. Atogram here. Atogram is what? Atogram is 1 gram is equal how much? 10 to the power minus 18 gram. But here, every element, every element, one atom, remember? One atom is very small like you just see here, very small. Look at this one, 10 to the power minus 23 gram. 
it's very small look another mass of sodium atom you know the sodium sodium is one of the uh, 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 11 the mass number of uh, sodium is 11 right the mass number of sodium is 11 at the same time the ma uh, the uh, what's that sorry atomic number is 11 mass number is 23 we are talking about not the mass number not the atomic number straightforward the mass of sodium for example if i say if this is a sodium if this is a sodium then i'm taking one sodium here one this is sorry if that is a sodium i'm taking this is number of sodiums are present here and these sodiums we are talking about what one sodium one sodium atoms one sodium atom one sodium mass is how what is that 3.819 into 10 to the power minus 23 do you think it's very much small right it's very very small for example if i say right if i say 10 to the power minus 23 means zero point just i have to write just i have to write look look zero point zero 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 how many zero i should take how many zero can you tell me how many zero? 23 zero. Three, 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 eight, zero, zero, zero. Right, I'm tired, sorry. That much very much small is one atom. It's tough to, what's that? Tough to uh, do the calculation. It's tough to do the calculation. Scientists thought, look, another one. I'll talk that later. Look, this one, mass of one chlorine atom, 5.903 into 10 to the power minus 23 gram. It's very much small. Look, mass of potassium atom. Can you tell me what is the mass, atomic number of so potassium? Can you tell me what is the atomic number 19. of potassium? Very good. 19. Can you tell me the mass number? Mass number. Mass number. What is that? What is that? 39. Atomic number is 19. Mass number is 39. Right? Remember, you might have been studying this one. Atomic number, okay, 19. You, you just put here mass number. Why don't you put here this unit, gram? Why don't you put gram here? Why don't you put the mass number is what? Mass number is number of proton plus number of neutron in one atom's nucleus. In one atom nucleus. So one atom means that is what every atom has that. You can't edit that one. You just take one atom and number of proton plus number of neutron is mass number. Mass number is different from mass of one atom. Remember that. Again, I'm saying mass number is different from mass of... Uh, uh, look, 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 this one. Mass of, mass of a chlorine atom. Look. Mass of a potassium atom. Mass of a potassium atom. One potassium atom is equal. 6.476 into 10 to the power minus 23 gram. Do you think it's very much very small? Can you respond to me? Do you think it's very small? Yes, sir. Very, very, very small. Imagine you're a scientist, right? 
like let's move to this blackboard now for example if i say mass of one carbon that i'm taking here if that is a carbon and this is one carbon atom right wait so one carbon atom taking one carbon atom and this is carbon one carbon atom and this one carbon atom mass is one carbon atom mass is what we have studied actually what is that one carbon atom mass is 1.993 into 10 to the power minus 23 gram imagine you are a scientist Imagine, yes, you people are studying science and you people are studying science. You imagine you are a scientist and you born something like 1850, for example, in Newton's days or Einstein's days. For example, I'm saying, yeah, I'm taking one person. Okay, one person who is scientist, I'm taking, I'm taking one person. Okay, okay. Okay, who is that? Okay, I don't know, Radhikran. First okay. right, For example, okay, imagine Ziyadsar is a scientist. Actually, I'm not, right? Ziyadsar is a scientist and he born 1850. He born 1850. And at that time, carbon was invented. And I am thinking this carbon value 1.993 is very small look we have found again sodium can you tell me have you noted have you noted sodium one atom three point tell me three point eight one nine into three point eight one nine into twenty three gram imagine I am just getting sodium one atom. I'm just taking one carbon atom. I'm just taking so oxygen one atom. I'm just taking one chlorine atom. Everything is very small. I see is very small. Now I'm a scientist. I I born 1850. I'm saying for next generation, it's tough to do calculation. I'm just saying what? No. For example, this might have been found like a Rutherford. Who Rutherford? Rutherford found what? Who Rutherford found what? Proton. Proton. I was born with Rutherford. I was born with Rutherford or Chadwick or JJ Thompson. I'm saying to JJ Thompson, what's that? Actually saying this is not, it's tough to coming generation. Let's make something very much easier to coming generation or next generation. I am saying we are talking about actual mass of every element of one atom. And I am saying, and I'm a scientist, I'm saying 1850 something like before years these are the very small numbers of mass. Let's make it very much seriously, very easier to next generation. So to next generation, they have introduced next generation, Ziyad sir or whoever scientist introduced another term that is relative atomic mass relative atomic mass remember that from one mass one mass they have introduced very easiest term 
very easiest to understand with the relative atomic mass. So let's move that one. That's a very clear part of this chapter. Look now this point. Mass of one atom. Mass of one atoms of element is very small. Look, I have to change like very, very small. Very, very, sorry. Okay, very, 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 very small. If there is a very, very small, so that scientists like me introduce what? Relative, relative atomic mass. Got it? Well, I need to Fair now then. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this is what scientists, you know that if you go to chemistry, A-level or A-level chemistry, if you, go, if you study the chemistry, I think we will, you will study the physical chemistry, chemical calculation. This is, they will not explain like this. They will think you might have been studying this all very clear in all level. Lots of people are not teaching like this. That's why people are confusing this chapter, especially chemical calculation. Look, from one potassium atom, from one chlorine atom, from one sodium atom, from one carbon atom, they introduce, it's very tough. Let's introduce what? Relative atomic mass. Let's talk about relative atomic mass. You just put here, you have to put here AR for relative atomic mass. We'll talk about that one, that one. But let's talk now what is actually the relative atomic mass. Relative means, for example, I'm going to talk differently now. Okay, look, how many times of an atom of a given element? How many times, if I say in Tamil, ethane tada vehicle of an element given element? Or a mulavatil kana padhundra anavintuni bu ethane tada vehicle? As much as 1 over 12, the mass of 12C, C12. You know that, you might have been studied. Now you will confuse. Can you tell me what is isotope? Now you will confuse this isotope. What is Which that isotope? Different same proton mass. number, same atomic number, different, different neutron. Mass number, which means different neutrons present. For example, there are two isotopes present for carbon. Can you tell me two isotopes? 12C16, that is one isotope. 14, 16, another isotope for carbon. Can you tell me another isotopes for oxygen? Oxygen. Oxygen has a different right? Oxygen 16, Eight, another isotope different, another one for this one is 18, eight. And you might have been studying chapter number three in grade 10, hydrogen, 1H1, 2H1, 3H1, 1H1, 3H1, 2H1. This is called protium, deuterium, tritium. Do you remember these all? Do you remember? One yes, H1 protium, yes, one deuterium, three H1 tritium. These threes are what commonly called as what? Isotopes. Which means here same mass atomic number and different mass number. A different mass number means different number of 
न्यूट्रॉन पेपर एंड नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन ये नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन इज जीरो वन माइनस जीरो जीरो टू माइनस वन डिफरेंट नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन ही इज वन एंड नंबर ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन थ्री माइनस वन इज वट टू सेम प्रोटॉन डिफरेंट न्यूट्रॉन और सेम एटॉमिक नंबर डिफरेंट मास नंबर and that is called what isotope here we talk about what 12c carbon that's why they have put if that is coming for example uh, if uh, if any element comes to this definition which is not having this is isotope they don't let, they don't need to put but here for carbon isotope is there that's why they put what carbon 12 isotope is called what relative atomic mass now if you read it this definition you can understand clearly let's talk about that look the definition come to this one next this this one you can understand clearly relative atomic mass means right mass of an atom of an element mass of n atom of element one atom of element over 1 over 12 12 time or 1 over 12 this is the point 1 over 12 here 1 over 12 the mass of c12 12c carbon isotope mass of carbon atom right let's talk